surf fishing, just trying to get started in it. Delaware Valley Outdoors. I got Angus here from Fish Tech. He's going to show us all about surf fishing. We're at Sandy Hook. Sandy Hook, North Beach. Stay tuned. It's going to be a good one. All right, come on. I want to get some of them fish. Let's, Let's go. Outdoors, your best source for fishing information on TV, radio, and the internet. Fishing, fall, surf fishing. Angus has got us out here from Fish Tech. We're going to be fishing Sandy Hook, North Beach, October, stripers, false albacore, false and he's going to give us the basics of how to get started in saltwater fishing. And we're going to, we're going to do it. Angus, I see the water that way. Let's go. Let's take a shot. Angus, the water out here, I mean, the beach is all the same. How do we really, how do you choose a spot to start fishing? Well, Bob, there's a couple of levels to that, that question. One is finding the, the general area that you want to fish. I mean, let me say that the shore is a, is a big place. You're looking at the Atlantic Ocean. But this area is, is a bowl between two points. So it's, a, it's sort of an eddy where bait can collect and the game fish will come in and feed on the bait fish. Now, once we get to this general location, which is you know, several hundred yards of productive fishing ground, you want to find the, the spot on the spot, find in the, where the uh, areas like rip lines or areas where the, the wash from the wave juts back into holes in the sandbar. Uh, those are the more, more subtle aspects of, of reading the beach that can, can make a big difference between having moderate success and having a great day on the beach. In freshwater fish, we fish tidal water also in the, in the rivers and stuff like that. How important is it to a surf fisherman uh, to, to look at tides? Tides are, are one of the most important factors to consider when you're surf fishing. Um, and I, I wish I could give you a, a simple answer like high tide is best, but, but that's going to, the specific answer is going to vary from beach to beach and it's going to vary throughout the year. The, uh, right now, at the mouth of Sandy Hook, at early fall, we're looking at best fishing on an outgoing tide, because that's flushing bait out of the bay, and it, it gets the whole food chain moving along the beach. Uh, that's not going to be the case the whole year. There, it, it'll shift, shift more over to incoming tides, um, or other times of the year. It's just important that you have a, a moving tide. It's not necessarily important that that it's coming in or out, it's just that you have good current flow. Those are things that help the, the predators hunt their hunt the, the bait fish. Bob, you know, I think it's time we, we do a little prospecting up the beach. Um, this, this bowl, I'm sure, is going to hold fish, but we're going to have to find a more, uh, more specific feeding zone. I, I, I see some areas up the beach where the, the waves are coming up higher on the beach and washing back stronger. That's an indication that there's a, a hole in the, in the bar that allows the, the, the fish uh, deep water feeding lane to come in and the hard rushing, rushing water coming back off the beach wash disorients bait fish and it makes it e easier for them to prey on them. So let's take a little walk up here. All right, let's go, let's get up there.
This is the hand that sows the seed, that grows the forest, that drinks from the stream, that hugs the mountain, that gives shape to the wind, that carries the kite, that is flown by the child, that is loved by the woman, that toils at the job, that gives to earth share, that supports the hand, that sows the seed. All life is woven together. How can we choose which environmental cause to support? EarthShare, the workplace giving program, makes it simple by bringing the leading environmental groups together under one umbrella. Support EarthShare, and you support them all, including the hands that sow the seeds and protect the forests and the streams and the children. To learn more, please visit our website. to be a victim and we can help call now about the i refuse to be a victim safety course from the women of the nra it's not about guns or joining the nra it's about planning your own personal safety strategy call now ah. yes what we got angus we're hooked up i think a big blue fish he hasn't showed himself yet but did he hit the top, but the popper? I believe he hit the popper. I was actually looking away, Bob, not, <laughs> not paying attention. To do it. Never stare at it. So he may have taken the he may have taken the teaser. I don't know. We'll hopefully we'll find out in a minute here. All right, I may have to come in front of you here, Bob. All right, come on, that's just what. There he goes. There he goes. Come on down. He's cooperating real nice, and that's an Albie. Wow, that's unusual. <laughs> Catching a false albacore on a on a big plug like that is unusual. Mm -hmm. Most of their prey is very small. Mm -hmm. They don't have good cutting teeth. Mm -hmm. They don't have good cutting teeth, Bob. So they don't eat big fish. They uh -huh. eat stuff that they can gulp down. Oh, I see. So that's about at the limit of what he of what he can consume. He can consume that's these guys. Beautiful fish. Yeah, they're a beautiful fish, and they're they're just all muscle. You can see they're they're like a tuna. Right. Well, aren't when, they... when he wants to go fast. He tucks that in and it just disappears. Okay, look, I'll hold the rod for you. If you would, I'll. And you can. Uh, I'll disconnect. And we can let this baby go. How much that weigh? About five pounds, maybe? Uh, Six and a half, maybe? All right. Well, they're good eating fish, too, right? No, these are horrible. Oh. Cat wouldn't eat these. Oh, albacore is the one. Yeah, right? the real albacore. This, this guy is a. I love the a, colors a, on them. It's though. a blood red, oily meat. It makes good shark bait. And it's fun to catch, but they're absolutely no good to eat. All right, send them back to the best best way to release these guys is throw them like a torpedo. That jump starts them and they take off. They don't you don't do any kind of resuscitation. You just chuck them. That was pretty cool. Now exactly, you what were you doing? So we can go back to it. I can get the slime off my hands. Sorry about that. <laughs> Uh, it was working the, working the popper with just a, a slow slow retrieve and shaking the rod tip. When you shake the rod tip like that, it makes the plug dart side to side. And um, this particular plug has a flat face rather than a cupped face. Mm -hmm. So it throws like a little spit with each turn. Like, now is that one of your baits? That uh... yeah, this is a, this is a fish tech lure. Uh -huh. uh, baits of this type have been around for, for decades. Mine's a, a, a little different in that it, uh, the, the construction is, a, is a, using some unique polymers mm -hmm. and the, the flat face, as far as I know, there's, there's not another flat face popper on the market. Uh -huh. Most of them have a cup face and it, it just makes a different sound. It's kind of like carrying golf clubs. You know, and you're you, using those uh, blood red hooks? Yes, I, I love the, the, the red hooks for anything near the top. Bob, if you look down there, there's most likely it's feeding bluefish underneath all those birds. You see the white splashes, that's the bluefish pinning the bait fish up against the surface and up against the beach. And, and the birds the, are picking that's up. That's how close they are. So they're picking up what, all the stuff that they, uh, the, the bait fish that are getting knocked apart and stuff? 
The, yeah, exactly. The, the birds are taking the, the wounded ones, the crippled ones, and anything that's just And I see these two big the boats coming in. What's going on yeah. now with that? <laughs> Well, hopefully they're going to shut down before they put the fish down, but uh -huh. that uh, looks like a big school of bluefish. Bob, you, you see how the water is brown right in front of you? Yeah. That's all bait. Jeez. That's all tiny, right there. tiny fish. The bay anchovies, uh, they call them rainfish when they're that small. Look at them here, I can see them. Bob, uh, we got, got a guy up here on the fly rod just getting ready to land a fish. This, this time of year is excellent fly rodding on the beach because the, the bait is so close in and the beach break, you don't have to make a long cast, so you don't have to be an expert caster. And he's, he's putting one on the beach right here. Looks like a bluefish. They're busted right here now. Yep. Start angling your cast to the right. Boy, there's fish all over here, isn't there? And I think these are all blues, so I, yeah, do like you're doing now, good fast retrieve. There we go. Here we go. Well, we got a bluefish here on the popper again. Let's see if we can get him come up in the beach break and beach him. That's a good size one. Go about four pounds. Fish you just got. definitely want to be careful taking the hooks out. Is there a strong fish that thrashes around a lot? And they also have a good set of teeth on them. Nice fish you got there, Angus. Thank you. That's nice blue. blue. Fish here. Bob, you may be tasting Albie there. <laughs> that thing's good. Woo! <laughs> Do I have the light rod or the straw? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of test line I got on here? That's uh, that's 30 pound power pro. We got the drag set real light, that's a light rod. Uh, best way to land these things is, is slow and gentle. So just hang on there. Oh, I lost them. You sure? Yeah. Keep keep coming. Oh, maybe I did. Oh, I got him. Woo! Hey, Bob, I think I got you beat. I got two. He's got two at one time. All right. <laughs> you know, I guess I want to oh, say something. I this lost. is my show. Don't don't catch two at one time. <laughs> All right, I I lost <laughs> the one off the teaser. <laughs> I had to. a heck of a fish here. I'm going to release this blue down here and Do a little shore coach in here with Bob. I think I see your fish, Bob. Getting there. All right, now which way to best land this fish now? Just be patient at this stage. Wait, wait till he's right over the, the, the crest of the wave and a big wave, let it wash him right up on the beach. And uh -huh. Keep pressure on him as the, as the wave goes. If the wave goes back, start walking back with him. Okay. Don't trust the drag. That's a little albacore, isn't it? I'm not sure. I think I think it's just a strong blue fish. Woo! Yep, just a good strong blue. I'll lead her. <laughs> I 
Now that fish, what's that fish weigh? That was about four pounds. What, four pounds? Yeah, that's, that's what, this, this time of year, most of them are gonna be in the two to four pound range. Mm -hmm. Once in a while, you'll get into little, you know, little half pound, one pound snappers, uh -huh. or, or some big gators and 10 pounds, but most of them are about that size. I'll tell you what, on this light line, or this light rod and this line, that was one heck of a fight. I'll tell you, if you wanna have some fun, come down here with, with these light rods, you can do have a heck of a lot of fun. That was good. That's good. Absolutely. You, you, you don't need anything more than bass tackle to do it this time yeah, of year. Yeah, really. You want to unhook it for me, Angus? Oh, you bet. Hooked up. See what you were saying about the, <laughs> the light rod. My fish. Oh, double header. Double. <laughs> oh. Hey, Angus, I love when a plan comes together. <laughs> oh. He hit that on top. Look at that. Woo. There's no stopping these fish, boy. Bigger. Okay, whichever one's biggest is mine, don't forget that. <laughs> that. One thing you'll find, Bob, when you're working the top water for, for bluefish, you're best off keeping it moving. It's not, it's not like uh, bass fishing where you'll stop it and give them a second chance. They, they'll come back harder if you keep it moving. You may slow it down, but don't completely stop, then they'll lose interest. Got him. Oh, Angus is on one. You on one too, Bob? A hit, I got about... <laughs> I got a... I don't think this one's particularly big, but it's... He doesn't want to come to the beach. Right at the beach break. He might come in on this wave. Almost. I have to go back. But Faster you can get another one. This one's too. Yeah, it's a couple nice ones there. Yeah. Next wave, try to give a lot of pressure on them. Nice fish, Bob. Woo! I'm gonna hold these bad boys up. Those are, those are like five. Got my rod. Oh. <laughs> got the rod. <laughs> That's a two at once, man. That's some nice you, fish right there. You, you can't ask for more than two at a time, right? No, Another two nice sized fish. Yeah. Those are beauties.
We'll be right back with more surf fishing after this. This is the hand that sows the seed, that grows the forest, that gives shape to the wind, that carries the kite, that is flown by the child, that is loved by the woman, that gives to Earthshare, that supports the hand. Earthshare is the workplace giving program bringing the leading environmental groups together. Support Earthshare, support them all. To learn more, please visit our website. for your free gun safe educational book at 1-888-4-EAGLE-4. That's 1-888-4-EAGLE-4. Wild Turkey Woodlands program uh, provides the materials. It provides a seed program, also technical assistance through their biologists. The land has been here for eons. It's only mine and my family's for a short period of time. We're the managers and the, and the caretakers of it. That takes into account our way of life and our interest in our hunting heritage. And the Wild Turkey Woodlands program is the greatest conservation habitat development program of any conservation organization in this country. I guess we're here with the uh, tackle box section. Basically, it, it was a, a basic set of lures that we had today. There wasn't any fancy stuff, but it's something that you would recommend uh, to go out on the beach with. We first started out with, uh, what's this? That's the, the fish tech spectrum spoon. It's a, a, a perfect mimic for the, the small peanut bunker, the, the broad-sided bait fish that are, that are traveling up and down the coast right now. Uh, and then we combined it with we, we rigged all of our lures with a, with a white teaser in front of them. That gives a, a, a nice another bait fish profile that fits in there with the, the, the small peanut bunker as well as the, the narrow bodied rain fish. Um, and how, how like the leader on that? How long is that off the top? Uh, the, the leader for the dropper for the, the teaser would be about 10 to 12 inches. Um, the longer the better. Uh, if you start retying and it starts getting shorter than say seven, eight inches, it's time, time to rig it up again. And basically, what do we, how do we work this big? Uh, with the, the, the spoon, I've always found just a straight retrieve works best. Uh, I know today you had great success uh, doing a, a rip and flutter uh, where you're getting a lot of fish picking up on the drop, which is a uh, really good strategy with, with schooling fish. A lot of them are just going to comb around looking for the injured ones rather than busting into the. the yeah, that's what I was doing. I was casting it up there, and well, you were using the popper on the, some of them. That fish was just fluttering. The, my bait was just fluttering down, and then they would just come up and and whack it. Right. Okay. Now you had a teaser on also, but you had one of your other baits. Now what's this bait here? Right. That's the Fish Tech Tremor, and that's a uh, it's a combination walk the dog bait popper. Uh, has real nice side to side action. Throws a little spit with each turn. Uh, causes a nice, nice attention getting commotion at the surface and we rigged that the same way with a, a, a teaser on a, on a 12 inch dropper a couple feet ahead of it and uh, gives, the, gives the fish two offerings to take. And you like those red hooks, right? I like the red hooks a lot, um, especially on, on surface, surface lures and lures you're working near the surface. Uh, it's a high visibility color until you get into deep water and that, that's when you lose the red from the spectrum. So when that, when that water, we had some pretty nice water out today, you know, this afternoon we had that. Okay, how about now, color-wise, you, you like this color too? Yeah, in, in fact, uh, most days I throw that blue and silver more than any other color. Um, but uh, today, yellow, yellow and white was doing great for us, so we, we stuck mm -hmm. with that most of the day. Now, we basically caught a lot of blues today. You caught a false albacore right. a little earlier. 
Uh, stripers, uh, again, will hit this bait, right? Yes, they'll, they'll take uh, all three of those baits. They'll take the teaser, they'll take the, the popper or the spectrum spoon. One of the things that I really liked was that a number of times today, we had two fish on, one on the teaser and one on the main bait, wherever it would have been, where it was the popper or the spoon. Right, that, that teaser, I mean, it, it's, it's given them a, a second offering. It almost doubles your chances of hookups, and some, sometimes it does double your hookup. <laughs> this is stuff is, is great. One other tip that, I, that you gotta tell us about is that this bag that you have here, you carry that on your back? Uh, yeah, I carry it on my shoulder. Um, this particular bag you can actually rig as a backpack, but I carry it on my shoulder. Um, you don't necessarily need to use it, this exact bag, but it, it's important to have a bag that you can carry uh, all the tools and lures that you're going to use for that. And then because we've moved up and down the beach, it's easy. You don't have to be going back and forth. You have everything right here. Right. And you can move. you got your pliers, you got your water, you got all your stuff. Exactly. That's it. And that's the tackle box. All right. Put in a, a little bit of time and it's a big reward. These fish are tough though, you know it? Oop. We almost had a double there, Bob. I just, <laughs> I just missed one. Now just be patient when he comes into the wash, let the wave bring him on the beach. There he comes. Want to grab him for me, Angus? Yeah, I'll leader him. There's a nice little blue. <laughs> His little Taylor blues, two pound, two and a half pound. That's, that's a perfect grilling size. Right there, yeah. Let me see if I can get him by the tail here. Hey, slow down. Oh, look at all that. Look at all the rainfish he's spitting. Look at up. all the rainfish he's spit up. He's Angus, been... I want to thank you for taking me down here. This is great fun. On the beach, where are we again? Sandy Hook. Sandy North Hook North surf fishing. Sandy Angus writes a column. What's the column? It's the, the surf column at DelawareValleyOutdoors.com. Want more information? Angus can do that for you. This fish are strong. Hey, I'm Bob Murray. I'll see you on the water. Hey, don't forget to go to our website, Delaware Valley Outdoors. All right, take that fish off. Let's get back in there.